Welcome, dear friends, to a captivating tale of redemption, unexpected twists, and the transformative power of love in the face of life's greatest challenges. Enjoy the story. Sarah Thompson had always been a fighter. From her days in the foster care system to her struggles in college, where she was often rejected due to her strong personality, and later as she clawed her way to the top of the business world. The glamorous life others envied hadn't come easily to Sarah, but she had made it. Everything would have been perfect if she hadn't allowed herself to relax and fall in love. Thompson, you're free to go. The guard's voice echoed through the cell block. Sarah jumped to her feet, her heart racing. This was it. After four long years, she was finally getting out. She'd said her goodbyes, made her promises to her cellmates, and memorized the list of favors she needed to do for them on the outside. As she walked towards the exit, the warden gave her a stern look. Thompson, don't let me see you back here again, or should I expect another visit? Sarah shook her head firmly. No, sir, you won't see me again. The bright sunlight nearly blinded her as she stepped outside. She squinted, shielding her eyes with her hand. The world seemed so big, so overwhelming after years of confinement. Sarah! A familiar voice called out. It was Kate, her childhood friend from the foster home. While Sarah had chosen money and success, Kate had opted for family, never allowing Sarah to help her financially. Katie! Sarah burst into tears as her friend embraced her. The warmth of human contact, free from the constraints of prison visits, overwhelmed her. Hey now, what's this? Kate soothed, rubbing Sarah's back. The worst is over. Come on, let's get you in the car. Jack and the boys are at home preparing a feast. As they drove, Sarah stared out the window, drinking in the sights of the city. Four years felt like an eternity. Buildings had changed, new stores had opened, and the streets seemed busier than she remembered. So much has changed, Sarah murmured. Kate glanced at her. Yeah, but some things remain the same. We're still here for you, Sarah. Always have been. Always will be. Sarah felt a lump in her throat. I don't deserve friends like you. Nonsense, Kate replied firmly. You made a mistake. You paid for it. Now it's time to rebuild your life. Kate's twin boys, Sarah's godsons, rushed to greet her the moment she stepped through the door. Aunt Sarah! They chorused, nearly knocking her over with the force of their hugs. Sarah felt tears welling up again as she hugged them tightly. They had grown so much, their voices deeper than she remembered. Kate playfully stomped her foot. Sarah Thompson, you're scaring me. I refuse to believe that four years behind bars broke you. Sarah hugged the boys closer, trying to smile. I'm okay, really. It'll pass. It's just... overwhelming. But in her mind, she couldn't help but think about Maria her little girl, who wasn't so little anymore. How much had she missed? Kate, seeming to read her thoughts, smiled gently. Maria knows you're out today. She's waiting for you. You've been visiting her? Sarah asked, her voice trembling with hope and fear. Of course, Kate replied, as if it was the most natural thing in the world. Did you really think we'd do anything else? She's family, Sarah. Two hours later, freshly showered and dressed in clothes that made her feel human again, Sarah found herself standing outside the foster home where Maria lived. Her heart pounded as she walked up the path to the door. And then there she was. Maria, no longer the little girl Sarah remembered, but a young teenager with Sarah's eyes and smile. Mom! Maria cried, throwing herself into Sarah's arms. Sarah held her daughter tight, breathing in the scent of her hair, feeling the warmth of her body. Oh, my baby, she whispered. I've missed you so much. Mommy, Mom, when are you going to take me away from here? Maria asked, her voice muffled against Sarah's shoulder. Sarah's heart broke at the plea in her daughter's voice. Soon, my sunshine, she promised, stroking Maria's hair. I'm going to talk to the director right now. Just be patient a little longer, my sweet girl. The director's sympathetic gaze did little to comfort Sarah as she sat across from her. Maria's hand clasped tightly in hers. Mrs. Thompson? The director began, her voice gentle but firm. Do you really think I enjoy keeping children in foster care when they have living parents? But I don't want you to face disappointment. Your assets are still frozen, and it's unclear if you'll get them back. Without a job, at the very least a job, no one will give you custody of your child. 
but the attempt will be noted. Sarah felt as if she'd been punched in the gut. But she's my daughter. I've served my time. Isn't that enough? The director shook her head. I'm sorry, Mrs. Thompson. The system is designed to protect children. We need to ensure you can provide a stable home for Maria. Get a job, show that you're rehabilitated, and we can revisit this conversation. As they left the office, Maria clung to Sarah. You'll come back for me, right, Mom? You won't forget about me? Sarah knelt down, looking her daughter in the eye. Maria, listen to me. I will never, ever forget about you. You're my world. I'm going to do everything in my power to bring you home. I promise. That evening, after the children had gone to bed, Sarah, Kate, and Jack sat around the kitchen table, strategizing. The most important thing right now is to find a job, Sarah mused, running her finger around the rim of her coffee mug. And it needs to be official, respectable. Jack scratched his forehead thoughtfully. You know, I saw a notice at our bank. They're looking for a janitor. It's not glamorous, but it's a job. Sarah shook her head doubtfully. It's a bank, though, with my record. Don't worry, Jack reassured her. The owner's a decent guy. I don't think he'll object. And let's face it, Sarah, you can't be picky right now. Sarah nodded, knowing he was right. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Thanks, Jack. After a moment of silence, Jack looked Sarah in the eye. Sarah, what about Arthur? Are you just going to let it go? Kate shot her husband an indignant look. Jack, stop it. The last thing we need is for her to start seeking revenge and end up back behind bars. You know how slippery Arthur is. Sarah sighed heavily, leaning back in her chair. You know, I'm also very much to blame for what happened. You shouldn't trust people so completely, especially someone like Arthur. I was stupid. I fell in love. And now I can't understand how I could have been so blind. Sarah, Kate said gently, reaching out to squeeze her friend's hand. Falling in love isn't stupid. What Arthur did to you, that's on him, not you. Sarah gave a bitter laugh. Maybe, but I should have known better. I let him take over everything and look where it got me. As the conversation lulled, Sarah's mind wandered back to when it all began. Arthur had come to work at her company about a year before she ended up in prison. Despite her best efforts, Sarah couldn't help but notice him. Arthur was handsome, intelligent, and paid her a lot of attention. At the time, Sarah was 35 and he was 29. Sarah had firmly decided that there would be no particularly close relationships in her life. She had given birth to her daughter for herself. Maria's father didn't even know he had a child. Sarah had been very careful in choosing Maria's father. Thankfully, there were plenty of men in her circle who didn't mind sharing their material. Of course, she chose the one who had no bad habits, had achieved certain successes, and had decent parents. They met only a couple of times. Then Sarah simply erased him from her life although Max wouldn't have minded continuing their relationship. She was lucky. She had calculated everything correctly. A week later, Max left for another country for three years. They never saw each other again. Sarah knew that he had supposedly gone to study. His parents were wealthy, so it made sense that the man needed a foreign education to continue the family business. Arthur very quickly began to replace Sarah at work. At first, she felt uncomfortable with it, but then she relaxed. After all, she was a woman, and it was quite logical that she could rest while her man worked for her. And he tried. He tried so hard that several companies sued Sarah at once, while Arthur somehow remained uninvolved. That is, he remained quite a respectable person, while Sarah became someone who illegally laundered money through other people's companies. Arthur immediately turned away from her as if he had never known her. Since Sarah was an orphan, Maria was placed in foster care, supposedly temporarily, but everyone understood that getting the girl back wouldn't be so easy. Sarah was pulled from her reverie by Kate's gentle voice. Sarah, you okay? Sarah blinked, focusing on her friend's concerned faces. Yeah, just remembering, it's all such a mess. We'll figure it out, Kate assured her, one step at a time starting with that job at the bank. The next day, Sarah stood outside the bank, smoothing down her simple blouse and skirt. The bank was new and modern, built quite recently. At least when Sarah was free, there wasn't even any construction on this site. 
Taking a deep breath, she pushed open the door and approached the receptionist. Hello, I'm here about the janitor position. The receptionist looked her up and down, then nodded. Take the elevator to the third floor. Miss Johnson in HR will see you. After a brief conversation with Miss Johnson, who apparently was in charge of hiring, Sarah was accepted. She couldn't believe it had been that easy. As she was being shown around, a man from security approached her. Mrs. Thompson, a word? Sarah tensed, expecting the worst, but the man's expression was neutral. You understand that I'll be keeping an eye on you? He said, his voice low. Not because you're a bad person, anyone can stumble, but because it'll be more reassuring for both me and you? Sarah smirked. And why for me? He smiled, the corners of his eyes crinkling. Because you'll know that I'm watching you, and you won't be tempted to do something you might regret later. Sarah laughed, genuinely amused. Well, well, I never thought philosophers could work in security. She got to work, while he watched her in surprise for a while longer. When Sarah laughed, she transformed from a gray, washed-out mouse into a charming woman of an interesting age. Over the next two weeks, Sarah threw herself into her work. She scrubbed floors, cleaned windows, and emptied trash cans with a dedication that surprised her co-workers. But she knew what was at stake. This job was her ticket to getting Maria back. At the end of her second week, she approached Miss Johnson's office, knocking hesitantly. Come in, Miss Johnson called. Sarah entered, twisting her hands nervously. Miss Johnson, I hate to ask, but I really need a character reference. I understand that I haven't worked here long, but... Miss Johnson's expression softened. I understand, Sarah, but only our boss can give you such a reference. When will he be here? I haven't seen him once. As a matter of fact, there are negotiations at the bank tomorrow, and he'll come with his assistant. Wait, you can approach him after the negotiations. Sarah smiled, relief washing over her. Thank you so much. As she turned to leave, Miss Johnson's voice stopped her. Sarah, tell me, haven't we met before? Sarah froze, her heart racing. She turned slowly, forcing a smile. No, not at all. I'm not from around here. My daughter was just sent here. She rushed out of the office, her mind whirling. I need to be more careful. That night, as she looked in the mirror at Kate's house, Sarah hardly recognized herself. Kate had dyed her hair a warm honey blonde, and she now wore a different hairstyle. But still, Sarah worried. She really didn't want to be recognized, not when she was so close to getting Maria back. You look great, Kate assured her, squeezing her shoulders. No one will recognize you, I promise. Sarah nodded, hoping her friend was right. Tomorrow was a big day, and she couldn't afford any mistakes. The next day, Sarah arrived at the bank early, determined to make everything spotless before the important meeting. She scrubbed and polished with renewed vigor, earning amused glances from her co-workers. Sarah, if you stay working with us forever, we'll stop looking in mirrors because they're everywhere here, one of the tellers joked. Sarah managed to smile. Just want everything to look perfect for the big meeting. Closer to noon, a fleet of sleek black cars pulled up outside the bank. Sarah's heart rate quickened as she watched several well-dressed men enter the building. This must be the group for the negotiations. As they passed, Sarah ducked behind a potted plant, not wanting to get in their way. She overheard snippets of conversation from her co-workers. Apparently, these negotiations were crucial for the bank's future. Once the group had disappeared into the conference room, Sarah resumed her cleaning duties. The bank had nearly emptied out, most employees having left for an early lunch to avoid the crowd. Figuring she might as well make herself useful, Sarah decided to clean the boss's office while the meeting was in progress. She grabbed her cleaning supplies and made her way to the top floor. As she approached the office door, she heard voices inside. Puzzled, wasn't the meeting supposed to be in the conference room? She hesitated, then knocked softly. Come in, a male voice called. Sarah opened the door and froze. The room was full of men in expensive suits, all turned to look at her. But she only had eyes for one face, a face she'd hoped never to see again. Arthur. He didn't recognize her at first, his eyes sliding past her dismissively. But then he did a double take, his face draining of color. Sarah felt as if the floor had dropped out from under her. 
What was he doing here? How dare he show his face in a respectable establishment after what he'd done? Before she could stop herself, Sarah found herself walking towards the table. The men looked at her in surprise, but she saw no one except Arthur. Well, hello, Arthur, dear, she said, her voice dripping with sarcasm. Who are you planning to scam this time? Have you changed your fraud scheme, working with men now? You used to do so well with women. The room fell silent, all eyes darting between Sarah and Arthur. Arthur, having recovered from his initial shock, stood up abruptly. What is the meaning of this? he demanded, his voice shaking slightly. Who let this, this cleaning woman in here? One of the older men at the table stood up, placing himself between Sarah and Arthur. That's enough, he said firmly. We've heard you. Please wait outside, miss. I'll call for you later. For now, we need to resolve some issues. Arthur, seeming to regain his composure, sneered. What issues? Why are you listening to her? She's nobody, just a cleaner. Let's sign the papers and get out of here. The room erupted into chaos, everyone talking at once. Sarah, realizing the magnitude of what she'd just done, backed out of the room quickly. As she closed the door behind her, the reality of the situation hit her like a ton of bricks. What had she done? She'd just jeopardized her job, her chance at getting Maria back, everything, all because she couldn't control her anger at seeing Arthur. With shaking hands, Sarah began to gather her things. There was no way she'd be keeping this job now. No character reference, no chance of getting Maria back anytime soon. She'd ruined everything in a moment of weakness. As she was shoving her few belongings into her bag, she heard footsteps approaching. Looking up, she saw Miss Johnson. Sarah, the HR manager said, her expression unreadable. The owner would like to see you in his office. Now. Sarah's heart sank. This was it. She was about to be fired. Taking a deep breath, she followed Miss Johnson to the elevator. The walk to the owner's office felt like the longest of Sarah's life. Each step felt heavy, laden with the weight of her mistakes and the consequences that were sure to follow. Miss Johnson knocked on the door, then gestured for Sarah to enter. Good luck, she whispered, giving Sarah an encouraging nod. Sarah stepped into the office, her eyes immediately drawn to the man standing by the window, his back to her. He was tall, with broad shoulders and salt and pepper hair. May I come in? Sarah asked, her voice barely above a whisper. The man turned around slowly, and Sarah felt as if the wind had been knocked out of her. She found herself staring into a face she hadn't seen in over a decade, a face she'd never expected to see again. Max? she gasped. Max's blue eyes met hers, a mix of emotions swirling in their depths. Well, hello, Sarah, he said, his voice deep and steady. I thought you'd never recognize me. To be honest, I never thought I'd meet you again. And meeting you here, in my bank as a cleaner, that couldn't have crossed my mind at all. Have a seat. Sarah sank into the chair opposite his desk, her mind reeling. Of all the scenarios she'd imagined, this wasn't even close to being one of them. Max studied her for a moment, then handed her a glass of water. You look like you could use this, he said softly. Sarah took the glass with trembling hands, taking a small sip. The cool water helped clear her head a bit, but she still felt overwhelmed. You never used to cry, Max observed, his tone a mix of curiosity and concern. Never. And you couldn't stand those who did. What happened, Sarah? How did you end up here? And what's this connection with Arthur? Sarah took a deep breath, trying to gather her thoughts. Where could she even begin? It's... It's a long story, Max, she said finally. Max leaned back in his chair, his gaze never leaving her face. I'm in no hurry, he said, and I hope you're not either. I'd very much like to hear your story from beginning to end. And don't think about hiding anything from me. Sarah nodded slowly. She probably should tell him everything. Max had always been a good man, and despite everything that had happened, she felt she could trust him. So she began her story. She told him about her rise in the business world, about her decision to have a child on her own, about meeting Arthur and falling for his charm. She spoke of her downfall, of the betrayal that had landed her in prison, of the years spent away from her daughter. Throughout her tale, Max listened silently, his expression unreadable. 
When she got to the part about choosing him as the unwitting father of her child, he stood up abruptly and walked to the window, his back to her. Sarah's voice faltered. Max, I... I'm sorry. I know I had no right to make that decision for you. I just... I wanted a child, and you were the best man I knew. Max remained silent for what felt like an eternity. When he finally turned back to face her, his expression was a storm of emotions, anger, hurt, confusion, and something else Sarah couldn't quite identify. Right now, he said, his voice low and controlled, I don't even understand who I want to be angrier with. You. Because you deprived me of the chance to be a father, of the opportunity to love and raise my own child. Or Arthur, for ruining my daughter's life and yours. Sarah felt tears welling up in her eyes again. I understand if you hate me, Max. What I did was selfish and wrong. I just... I hope you can forgive me someday. Max ran a hand through his hair, sighing heavily. I don't hate you, Sarah. I'm angry, yes. Hurt, definitely. But hate? No. We were both young and stupid back then. We've both made mistakes. He paused, then asked the question Sarah had been dreading. Where is she now? Our daughter? Sarah's heart clenched. In foster care, she admitted. They won't give her to me until I get a job and bring a character reference. That's why I'm here, why I took this job. I'm trying to get her back. Max's eyes widened, a fire lighting in them. What? No, absolutely not. My daughter is not staying in foster care for one more day. He strode to his desk, picking up his phone. Cancel all my appointments for the rest of the day, he barked into it. Then he turned to Sarah. Let's go. We're getting our daughter back, now. Sarah stared at him, hardly daring to believe what she was hearing. Max, are you sure? You don't even know her. Max's expression softened slightly. She's my daughter, Sarah. Our daughter. I've missed out on too much already. I'm not missing another day. As they left the office, Sarah felt a glimmer of hope for the first time in years. Maybe, just maybe, things were finally going to turn around. They flew through the night city, Max's expensive car cutting through traffic like a hot knife through butter. He kept making calls, his voice alternating between persuasive and commanding as he spoke to various officials and contacts. Sarah watched him in amazement, realizing that the shy, studious Max she'd known years ago had transformed into a powerful, influential man. She felt a pang of regret for what might have been if she'd made different choices. Finally, they pulled up to the gates of the foster home. The gates opened immediately, as if by magic. Sarah looked at Max, hope and fear warring in her chest. Will they really give Marina back, just like that? Max's jaw was set in determination. They will. They have no choice. I'll ruin the entire administration of this city if I have to. But our daughter is coming home with us tonight. They strode into the building, Max's presence commanding immediate attention. Within minutes, they were ushered into an office where a flustered-looking woman was hurriedly shuffling papers. Mr. Anderson, she began, this is highly irregular. There are procedures, protocols. Max cut her off with a wave of his hand. I understand, but this is an exceptional situation. I've just discovered I have a daughter, and I want her home. Now. The woman looked between Max and Sarah, her brow furrowed. But Miss Thompson's situation is no longer relevant, Max finished for her. I'm taking full responsibility for both Sarah and Maria. Any issues can be directed to my lawyers. Fifteen minutes and several signed documents later, Sarah found herself standing outside Maria's room, her heart pounding. Max squeezed her hand reassuringly as she knocked. Come in, came Maria's sleepy voice. Sarah opened the door, tears already forming in her eyes. Maria, sweetie, it's time to go home. Maria's eyes widened as she took in the scene. Her mother, free and here, and the strange man standing beside her. Mom, she whispered, hardly daring to believe it. Sarah rushed forward, enveloping her daughter in a tight hug. Oh, my baby, I've missed you so much. Maria clung to her mother, tears streaming down her face. Is it really over? Can we really go home? Yes, sweetheart, Sarah assured her, stroking her hair. We're going home, all of us. Maria pulled back slightly, her gaze moving to Max. Mom, who's this with you? Sarah straightened up, looking at Max. 
She didn't know how to introduce him, but he stepped towards Maria himself. Hi, Maria, he said, his voice gentle. My name is Max, and, well, I'm your dad. I'm sorry I didn't show up earlier. I didn't know about you until today, but I hope you'll give me a chance to be part of your life now. Maria's eyes widened, darting between Sarah and Max. My dad? she whispered. Max nodded, kneeling down to Maria's level. I know it's a lot to take in, and I know I have a lot of catching up to do, but I want you to know that I already love you, Maria. You're my daughter, and I want to be here for you, if you'll let me. Maria hesitated for a moment, then threw her arms around Max's neck. I've always wanted a dad, she said, her voice muffled against his shoulder. As Sarah watched Max and Maria embrace, she felt a warmth spreading through her chest. For the first time in years, she felt like everything might just work out. The next few months were a whirlwind of changes. Max insisted that Sarah and Maria move into his spacious penthouse apartment, saying it made the most sense while they figured things out. Sarah was hesitant at first, not wanting to impose, but Max was insistent. You're Maria's mother, Sarah, he'd said, and whether we planned it or not, we're a family now. Let's give this a chance. So they moved in, and slowly but surely, they began to form a semblance of family life. Max threw himself into fatherhood with gusto, making up for lost time with Maria. He took her to museums, helped with her homework, and even attempted to learn how to braid her hair, with mixed results. Sarah watched their bond grow with a mixture of joy and trepidation. She was thrilled that Maria finally had the father she'd always wanted, but she couldn't help feeling a twinge of guilt for keeping them apart for so long. One evening, after Maria had gone to bed, Sarah found Max on the balcony, staring out at the city lights. Penny for your thoughts, she said, moving to stand beside him. Max turned to her, a small smile on his face. I was just thinking about how much my life has changed in the past few months. If someone had told me at the start of the year, that I'd suddenly become a father to a teenage daughter, I would have thought they were crazy. Sarah nodded, leaning against the railing. I know what you mean. Sometimes I still can't believe we're here, like this. They stood in comfortable silence for a moment before Max spoke again. Sarah, there's something I've been wanting to ask you. Sarah's heart skipped a beat. What is it? Max turned to face her fully. I know we have a complicated history. And I know we've both changed a lot over the years, but these past few months, getting to know you again, raising Maria together, it's made me realize something. He took a deep breath. I think I'm falling in love with you, Sarah. Not the you from the past, but the you I've gotten to know now. The strong, resilient woman who's been through hell and come out the other side. The loving mother who'd do anything for her daughter. I was wondering, would you consider giving us a chance? A real chance this time? Sarah felt tears prickling at the corners of her eyes. Oh, Max, she whispered. I've been falling for you too. I just, I wasn't sure if you could ever forgive me for what I did. Max reached out, cupping her face gently. I forgave you a long time ago, Sarah. We've both made mistakes. What matters is where we go from here. As their lips met in a soft, tender kiss, Sarah felt as if all the pieces of her life were finally falling into place. Six months later, the bank's employees gathered for a celebration. The reason? The wedding of their boss, Max Anderson, to Sarah Thompson. As Sarah walked down the aisle, her eyes locked with Max's. Maria stood beside him, beaming with joy. Kate, as maid of honor, gave Sarah a wink and a thumbs up. When it came time for the vows, Max spoke first. Sarah, he began his voice thick with emotion. Life has a funny way of bringing people together. We may have taken the long way round, but I believe everything that's happened has led us to this moment. You've given me the greatest gift in our daughter, and now you're giving me your heart. I promise to cherish both for the rest of my days. Sarah, tears glistening in her eyes, responded. Max, you've been my second chance in so many ways. You've shown me what true forgiveness and love look like. You've embraced our daughter with open arms and an open heart. I promise to love you, support you, and stand by you through whatever life throws our way. As they sealed their vows with a kiss, the gathered crowd erupted in cheers. 
Maria rushed forward to hug them both, completing their family circle. Later at the reception, as Sarah danced with her new husband, she couldn't help but marvel at the journey that had brought them to this point. What are you thinking about? Max murmured in her ear. Sarah smiled up at him. Just about how sometimes the most unexpected turns in life can lead us exactly where we're meant to be. Max nodded, pulling her closer. I couldn't agree more, Mrs. Anderson. Here's to new beginnings and second chances. As they swayed to the music, surrounded by friends and family, Sarah felt a sense of peace she'd never known before. She had faced her darkest moments, weathered the storm, and come out stronger on the other side. And now, with Max and Maria by her side, she was ready to embrace whatever the future held. The road hadn't been easy, but as Sarah looked around at the smiling faces of her loved ones, she knew without a doubt that every step had been worth it. This was her happily ever after, and she intended to cherish every moment of it.